So in this lesson, we're going to be talking about the clip operation. Clip is one of our basic geoprocessing tools. And so basically what the clip operation allows you to do is to create a subset of a much larger, of a large uh, geographic data set uh, based on the geometry of a second data set. So we often use clip when we have you know, a, a large uh, vector data set, but then we have a much smaller area of interest that's being defined by another data set that we've got. And we want that large data set to, uh, to be clipped down to the boundaries of just the area of interest that uh, we want. So based on that information, you can tell that we need two different files in order to execute a clipping operation. We're going to need the, the basic input data set, which is the one that's going to be clipped. And this is the one with the large geographic extent. And then you also have the clipping features or the clipping data set, which is going to define uh, the, the boundaries that you want that larger set clipped to. Uh, so the word subset is very important here. The clip tool is our subset tool. And this is going to be especially important when we talk about what happens to the attribute table and compare it to some other geoprocessing operations. So clip gives us this pure subset of one data file based on the others. So you can see here that if we have this large line data set, uh, but we might not be interested for our, the purposes of our GIS analysis in this entire area. We may have a much smaller area that we're interested in studying. And so if we have another file that defines the area that we're interested in studying, then we can execute the clip operation to make the large line data set conform to the boundaries of our area of interest. Sometimes people think about the clip operation as a cookie cutter, sort of the cookie cutter uh, geoprocessing tool. And uh, that is certainly how lots of people think about it. You have this large input data set that's kind of like the giant piece of dough, and then your clipping feature is like your cookie cutter. And then when you execute the uh, clip operation, well, you get that nice, neat cutout of that large uh, sheet of dough perfectly around your uh, clipping feature, your cookie cutter. And that's the clip operation. So, I mean, it is very uh, simple in a sense, and it's very intuitive. Lots of people, when they look at the geoprocessing operations and they see the clip, they sort of intuitively understand what it's going to do. And the clip operation is extremely common because there are so many situations where you have people with a large, uh, where people have a large vector data set, and they it's got a very large geographic extent, and then they need to are concerned with just a subset of that. So it's really easy for us to come up with practical examples of why would I want to clip something? We can come up with those all day. Uh, but one reason that GIS analysts are so frequently in situations where they need clip uh, is because uh, from a data management standpoint, from a data storage standpoint, once you get into geo databases and so, so forth, you're going to find that it's much uh, more efficient and more practical to go ahead and store the data sets with a very large geographic extent uh, and then later have them clipped if you need a smaller area rather than trying to store uh, a, a whole bunch of smaller data sets with smaller spatial extents. And that's because it is easier for an analyst to take the large data set, large in geographic extent, and then clip it down to something smaller, rather than having to go and find all of those data sets with much smaller data, uh, smaller spatial extents, geographic extents, and try to combine them and put them all together. You have to go find all of them and put them together. So it's much uh, much more efficient to store it the large extent and then trim it down. So for instance, if we wanted to store information about all of the interstates in the United States, it might make sense then from a data management standpoint to have one GIS vector data file that stores all of the information about all of the interstates across the United States, rather than trying to have 50 separate interstate files, one for each state and having them all you know, try to line up and so forth. 
That way, if you need information about the interstates, you can go to this data set, pull down one vector file about the interstates, and then if you have the boundaries of the particular state that you're interested in, which you probably do, it's very easy to execute a clipping operation and just get the interstates within the state that you're interested in studying. Uh, so let's take a look at uh, what sort of the valid inputs are for the clipping tool. Uh, kind of straightforward here. The input data that you can clip can be points, lines, or areas. We can execute clipping operations on all three of those kinds of geometry. Uh, as far as the clipping feature goes, the one that's going to be used to, to do the clipping, well, it's pretty common to think about that in terms of an area as some kind of polygon. And um, uh, when we're thinking about different examples of this, thinking about having an area of interest, thinking of the clipping feature in terms of an area or a polygon is very natural. Of course, the extent of the, the geographic extent of the feature set to be clipped and the extent of the feature, the clipping feature, do have to coincide. They do have to overlap. Otherwise, you'll execute the clipping operation, but you won't actually have anything, uh, won't have any result because they don't overlap. Uh, you can, however, you can use as a clipping feature points and lines rather than just areas. But the situations where you do that, I think, are a little bit more limited. We can think of all kinds of examples where we would have the clipping feature be an area. It's a little bit harder to think of uh, uh, situations where we'd be clipping things by lines or by points, at least right off the bat. Uh, and it is a little bit more limited in circumstances where you would do that uh, because if you're clipping something by an area, well, you can clip lines by an area, you can clip points by an area, and you can clip other areas by areas. Uh, but you can't do that if your clipping feature is points or lines. For instance, if your clipping feature is a line, then you can clip other lines or points, but you can't clip areas by a line. Same thing with points. Well, you can clip points by other points, but you can't clip an area by a point file. So yes, typically it is true that our clipping features are areas. If you are looking to clip something by points or by lines, if your clipping feature is going to be points or lines, then the computer is going to be very particular about making sure that the input data set to be clipped and the lines or points in the clipping feature are exactly coincident. And that's what's going to allow it to make this clip. It's going to be very particular about that. You know, if you're trying to clip a set of points by an area, well, you can just draw that area in there, you know, that shape, and then anything that's within that shape is going to be clipped out when you run the operation. But if you're trying to clip points by points, the points in your clipping feature have to be exactly on top of, you know, exactly coincident with the points in your input feature. Otherwise, it's going to say, well, well there's no nothing here to, uh, to clip. So that's another reason why uh, it's a little bit di more difficult to come up with situations where you would have data sets like that. Uh, but you might, and it is uh, a valid thing to do. Now, I am frequently asked when we're looking at the geometry here of the clip, particularly once we've been through intersect, so what is the difference between the clip tool and the intersect tool? And uh, this is an excellent question because when you just look at the, the geometry of this, if I take a look at the geometry, I've got these two files, I've got these two uh, rectangles right here, and I execute a intersect operation, an intersect operation, the result is this, right? We saw that. Well, now what if I have these two files again and I say I want to clip this file by this file. What's the result of that operation? Well, it's this. This is what the geometric uh, output is. And so those look uh, very much the same. In fact, they are the same. So why, in what situations would you use one and not the other? Uh, well, there are two, uh, there's one major reason, but let me, there, there are two major reasons. One of them is, is sort of a core reason, but let me give you this reason first. First is that, remember we said that when you do an intersection operation, you can intersect more than two data sets. So if you need all areas that are A and B and C and D and E, 
Well, you can load all of that into an intersect operation. It'll go through and intersect them all for you. That's not true with a clipping operation. Clipping operation, we just have the input data set to be clipped, and then we have the uh, clipping feature in, that, in another data set to do the clipping by. Uh, so you can't load multiple things to clip into the clip tool. Now there are ways to sort of to, to do what they call batch clipping. If you have a lot of clipping that you need to do, then you can uh, execute a batch clip. But that's a, a little bit different. We're not going to talk about that right now. But that's actually a way to execute a whole bunch of clipping operations in succession uh, efficiently and not actually putting a whole bunch of different data files into the same clipping operation. So it's a little bit different. So intersect allows us to have multiple inputs into a, a single operation. Clip does not, only two. Uh, but the more fundamental reason that you might want to use clip or intersect as opposed to the other one has to do with really the core of what it means to be those tools. And uh, remember, uh, it actually has to do with the, the attribute table. We want to think about the attribute table here as well. True, when we look at the geometric outputs here, we see something very similar. But remember, the geoprocessing tools are also about the systematic manipulation of the attribute table. So we also want to take into account what's happening with them. And therein lies a major distinction between the intersect tool and the clipping tool. So. Um, Remember, we said that the clipping tool is the true subset tool, a subset tool. And that's uh, what we're thinking about when we're looking at the attribute table here. Because in a clipping operation, the attribute table of the input file that, you're, that you are clipping, the file that you're clipping, the attribute table of the file that you're clipping, is written directly to the attribute table of the output file. So whatever the attributes were of what is being clipped, are the attributes of what you what you get out. That's different with the intersect tool, remember. Remember with the intersect tool, the uh, attribute table of the output is a combination of those two. You know, it's actually an intersection of not only the geometry, but an intersection of the attribute tables as well. So when you open up the attribute table after an intersect, you're going to find an intersection of the attributes of all of the files that were intersected. So you're going to end up with more stuff in the attribute table as the result of the intersection. That's not what you get with the clip. You get exactly what was in the input in the output. And there's, it doesn't take into account the attributes of the clipping feature at all. So that's what makes it this true subset tool. I want a subset of this uh, data file. I want a subset not only of the geometry, but I want a direct subset of the attribute table as well. I don't want to have anything added to it. So that's a very important, in fact, it's one of the fundamental distinctions between the clip tool and the intersect tool. Think about what happens with the, with the attribute table. Uh, so having, since we're on the subject of the attribute table, having the attributes of the input data set directly copied over to the output data set is a uh, very handy uh, because when you're trying to create a subset of a data set, I mean, that's what you want. But it is important to think about what might all of a sudden become incorrect about the attribute table once its information is copied over. So we have to think about that. Consider this situation right here. So what happens when the geometry of some input feature to be clipped overlaps the uh, geometry of the clipping feature. Well, okay, so the tool is going to cut apart that geometry, right? So, I mean, think about that. If you have this polygon shape and you've got this other polygon shape that you're clipping it by, well, it's going to cut the geometry there. It's going to cut the geometry up. Well, okay, so now there's your subset of the geometry, uh, but it's, it, the, the geometry has been cut apart and copied into the uh, output feature. Uh, but then what happens is whatever the attribute information in that, for that feature was is also copied directly to the attribute table of the output feature. And if that, that's fantastic if the information in the attribute table, if a column in the attribute table 
uh, just report something like that uh, features uh, name. Maybe you know it's a political unit and it has a name, and we cut it cut it apart. But hey, that's still the name of that political unit. I just don't have it all there. But uh, it would be bad if it holds information that would become incorrect based on the manipulation of that geometry. For instance, it's not uncommon at all to have the area of polygons calculated in the attribute table. So I could have in the attribute table for this file, what is the area in square miles or square kilometers or whatever stored in the attribute table? I might need that. Um, but now when you run the clip operation, the information in the attribute table, the information in that field about the area is directly copied over to the output. And now you can see that it is wrong. The clip operation is not going to do something like recalculate the area of all of the geometry now. All it's going to do is take that number and move it forward. So you can easily tell that that number would now be incorrect. You have to know that. You have to recognize that. There's no recalculation of that area. Likewise, what if these were uh, census regions, census tracts, or something like that? Uh, and so you have a column, a, a field in the attribute table for it that says how many people there are. Well, now I'm going to execute a clip because I need a subset of this. So here's the, the clipping region based on that. Execute the clip get the subset of the geometry, but now what happens to that field in the attribute table that records how many people there are? Well, it's just copied over, but now it's probably incorrect. I mean, there were however many number of people living within that entire census region, but when I cut the geometry apart based on my clipping feature, well, I have no idea how many people there are that are living in just this little part, just this little subset of that census tract, as opposed to the rest of it. And there's no way for the computer to know either. So it's not like the computer is going to be able to rerun that calculation or there's no calculation for it to run in order to, uh, to get that information. And so you're going to have to know after a clipping operation what information in the attribute table uh, that it all got copied over, but what information is still valid and is there information that is no longer valid. And if you have information that's no longer valid, what I recommend you do is go ahead and delete it. Go ahead and delete that information. That way it's not accidentally used. That way if it gets passed off to somebody else, they don't accidentally think that it's accurate. Uh, so that's a, a very important part of this, being aware of the fact that the attribute information is just copied directly over. That's great for certain things. It's not great for other things. You have to go and find out uh, which one, uh, which information is still valid. Okay, well, that is the clip tool. Subsets, very important, used all the time. So I guess we'll leave it there, though, with uh, that tool, and we'll move on to the next tool in the next video.